Looking for Madden 22 Ultimate Team Coins? AOEAH.com is the cheapest and most reliable coins on the marketplace. Click the link in the description and use coupon code SPORTS for 3% off your order. How would you guys like to learn the best blitzing defense in Madden 22? If so, continue to watch this video because I'm about to break it down. Yo, what's up YouTube? It's Duke back here from SportsGamers.com. And in today's Madden 22 tip video, I'm going to break down the absolute best blitzing defense in all of Madden 22. This is a simple defense that's very effective and it's going to work on any game mode, on any system. So no matter what you play on, we got you guys covered. Now, there's been a lot of videos this year about not necessarily this blitz, but this type of defense and this formation. And I feel like, you know, just none of them really explain everything you guys need to know. So in this video, I want to go super in-depth. I think this is going to be the best breakdown of this defense that's been done. I'm going to break down not only the setup, but also the players you're going to need, the abilities you're going to want to use, and just, you know, who you're going to want to use or and how to adjust. Because all that stuff is very important. You can't just, just come out of the game and run this setup and expect to do good if you don't know what you're doing. So we're going to be looking at the 4-3 even 6-1 defense. This has been made pretty popular this year. Some streamers run it. I actually put out a breakdown of this defense before, really as soon as the game was even released. So I feel like I was the first person to find this defense personally, but that's neither here nor there. Right now I want to go over the abilities and the types of players you're going to want to use. So this defense gets heavy pressure from the outside linebackers. So with that said, they're going to need to be fast, and the reason why I chose the Seahawks to do, make this video is because they definitely have some very fast uh, guys you could put on the edge to get some pressure. Now, as you guys can see here, you know, we have, you know, this guy right here, he's 90 speed. We have one that's 87 speed. We have 86 speed. Um, we have, you know, plenty of players that are pretty fast coming off the edge. Now, if you play Mutt, you can even get faster players than that, which is really, really nice. So, we're going to go ahead and sub in, uh, I believe it was number, where is he at? Yeah, this guy right here, 58. And that's going to give us more pressure off the edge. Now, a lot of people that play this game this year just have a whole bunch of abilities on their secondary players, and that's fine. But for this formation, you only need 4 DBs. So, I do like to put Acrobat on my 4 DBs. I think that is still a must. I look for height. A lot of times this year when it comes to both my corners and safeties because they're just going to play a lot better if they're tall. Obviously speed and coverage ratings are important as well. Some other abilities you might choose to use on your secondary players could be mid-zone KO or pick artist. This is going to be a primarily zone-based defense so you don't really have to worry about man-to-man. -man. I mean you can play man but I wouldn't recommend doing that too often when running this defense. Now as far as your edge players go, um, we're going to go ahead and come out in, you know, this play. And we're, I like to use this with auto flip off. You could technically use any play, but we're just going to use Tampa 2. Now, as far as your Ed's player's abilities go, I recommend using under pressure. Under pressure is essentially when these players get pressure off the edge, which you, you're going to see. They're going to get crazy pressure off the edge with this defense, as you guys can see here. Um... They're going to, even if the quarterback releases the ball, they're going to force inaccurate throws, which is really nice. Now here, some, and I'm going to sh show you guys the setup in a second. I just want to get started with some basic stuff before we get into the setup. Here you do see that you not only sometimes get pressure from the linebackers, but your D lineman can sometimes shoot through the gaps untouched or even disengage. So it is important to have good speed at your 2D ends. And sometimes you'll even want to drop these guys into coverage. But under pressure is a really nice ability because even if they release the ball, you will get inaccurate throws. I've seen some people use this defense with Edge Threat Elite, but the thing about Edge Threat Elite is Edge Threat Elite doesn't really work if you use contains, and I do think this defense is better when using contains and just keeping them on actual blitzing angles. That's my personal opinion, but you can kind of just play with that. The other thing about this defense is if you play Mutt, you can easily manipulate your depth chart to get a safety in the game at linebacker to use her. Now, if you're going to do that, that's great. That makes things easy. But if you're not going to do that and you're going to use an actual linebacker, you might consider putting Lurker on the linebacker you're going to use her because he'll just get better jumping animations. 
Now that we've kind of explained that, I do want to get into the setup. So this setup technically could be done from any player of the formation, although I think Tampa 2 is probably the easiest one to use and adjust from. If you're enjoying my YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out sportsgamers.com. This is where I post all my premium Madden 22 content. I have ebooks, offensive and defensive schemes, plus I do four to six premium tips every week in the Madden vault. This content is available for both current and next gen, so no matter what system you play on, we got you guys covered. Our best offer yet is the Sports Gamers Madden VIP membership. This gives you access to the entire site, every tip, every ebook, plus the meta reports for only $19.99. I'll post a link to it in the description and the comments. Make sure to check it out for the best tips and content available at the best price anywhere. And before I do break down the setup, I just want to remind you guys, I do free Madden 22 tip videos each week on a daily basis on my channel. I also do some gameplays and some news. So if you enjoy this free content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop us a like on the video, turn your notifications on, comment, all that stuff does help me out a lot as a content creator. Continue to do these free videos for you guys. And if you really rock with me, smash that like button. Let's try to get the 300 likes on this video. So the setup is... I won't say it's extremely easy, but I find it to be simple. And as long as you get into practice mode and get some muscle memory going on here, you should be able to do this pretty easily. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you come out is go ahead and crash your defensive line to the outside. Now, another thing about this is, you know, if you want to base a line, you could just go ahead and in your coaching adjustments, set your auto alignment on base. So that's a, even one less step you'd have to do. I personally, myself, do base align. I've seen people run this defense and they don't. I think base aligning is the best way to do it. So if you're going to base align every play, you probably should just come out with your coaching adjustments on your alignment for base. But after that, you're going to crash the D-line to the outside, slam them to the outside. So to do that, you hit left on the D-pad and then up on the right analog stick. You want to blitz all of your linebackers, and the easiest way to do that is just hit right on the D-pad and down on the right stick. And then you want to QB contain, which is either going to be R1, R1, or RB, RB, depending upon the system you play. Now, that's all you really have got to do, other than just use your this linebacker in the middle and just kind of stand over the center. But one thing I would also recommend doing, which is very helpful this year on any defense, honestly, is to pass commit. And the pass commit, again, you're going to either hit R1 or RB, depending upon the system you play on. And then you're going to hit up on the right analog stick. This, I feel like, does a better job of getting your pass rush better and also your coverage better because it's essentially telling the defense to just worry about the pass. And you might be wondering, well, what if they run the ball? And, you know, in running this defense this year, or just so many defenses where I pass commit basically every play, I don't really see that much of a negative effect when they do run the ball because most people pass much, most of the time much anyway. But even when they do run the ball, it doesn't really affect you negatively enough to where you're not going to want to do it because the advantages are just so much greater than any potential negatives you might have. So that's really all you have to do. The other key to this blitz that a lot of people don't realize is how to use her. So what you're going to want to do is you're actually going to want to basically just hit the center, bam, and then drop back into coverage and just take away the first read. So what you're going to notice here is that even with the running back blocked, and this is why I don't like you having to use edge threat elites because you really want to use contains on this blitz because you'll see that the contains, they just run right around the running back like he's not even there, but blitz angles don't really do that. You see, we get three guys basically free of the quarterback here, so all I have to do is take away their first read. On this play, they're either going to go to the slot or the tight end. So you kind of will want to bait them in between the two, sometimes cover one, sometimes cover the other. And if you just get underneath them with a tall player, you're going to get a lot of animations to where you can get picks. Now, you can't be super far underneath like you could be a few years ago, but you can, you know, you can bait them pretty easily on a blitz like this. I will say this is the type of blitz to where sometimes, you know, you will get, you know, dotted. Like, you're not always going to get sacks and turnovers with this defense. You know, it's high risk, high reward. But if you run this enough... They're going to be pressured into making so many quick reads and throws that you're going to get some turnovers for sure. So the other thing is, a lot of times people will face a defense like this and they'll just say, to the hell with blocking it, it's difficult to block. We're just going to send everybody out. So when you see that, you actually don't even have to engage or touch up the center. You can just immediately drop into coverage. And one thing I will say is anytime you see anyone go, or everybody going out, you always want to take the running back. You know That should be the first guy you look to guard because most of the time... If somebody's sending everybody out on a route, 
including the running back, that's going to be like basically their first read. Now that time I didn't do that great of a job of guarding him, but here you see I do much better. I get underneath him, and if they would have thrown that, I could have easily got a pick there. Now with this defense, again, you see that not every single time am I getting the edge rusher um, that's getting the sack. Sometimes you, you see here how they just literally let that D lineman just come through the gap, and I get pressure off the left edge too. When you get that pressure through the gap, you, that's why you want these DNs to be fast. Now, I realize if you look at this play, like, yes, you could throw over the middle, but you don't understand. In a game situation, you only have time for your first read. And if you're banking on the running back being open and I guard him, you're either throwing a pick or taking a sack. Because by the time you realize you can't throw it to him, the pressure's in your face. So this defense does have holes, obviously, but it's su such a high-intensity blitz that you will get enough sacks and turnovers to make it worth it getting dotted here and there. So, like, if they did the same play on me, again, I could easily just take one step left like I was guarding the running back and then go right underneath the seam route or the crossing route and get a pick. So that's kind of how you want to bait them. Another thing is you can definitely, if you're going to run a lot of cover too, zone drop. You could very easily go ahead and zone drop your flats to, say, 30 yards. But a lot of times what I'll do in this defense is actually just play hard flats on it with no zone drop because I know that they're not even going to have time for any of that anyway. So if they just try to run something you know, where they're attacking the flat, I mean, it's almost better for you just to allow them to have the deeper routes and just take away the hard flat area because they're not going to have time for those deeper routes to develop anyways. At the end of the day, if you take away the flat and then just take the away the middle yourself, again, you're going to see they're not going to have time for that wheel route or that corner route or whatever route it is on the sideline to even get open because this pressure is going to be so fast. Again, look, you get three people free pretty much immediately. We took the flat away and got underneath the crosser. And like, yes, you could say, oh, well, at this point, we could just lead this down the sidelines for a touchdown. Sure, but look, you're already basically getting sacked by the time you see that. Because at this point, you know, you got two people coming free. And if you throw that now, that's not open, right? And at this point, when it's starting to get open, these guys are too close to get the ball off, right? You, can, you just can't make those types of reads against this defense. And again, that's why you really want to have tall guys that are fast. Uh, because they will make those lanes even tougher. And again, that's another reason why you, you know you want abilities on your four secondary players as well to make it as hard to throw on as possible. Now, the crazy thing about this blitz is even if they max protect it, you're still going to get in the majority of the time. Um, sometimes you'll have to get disengages, but most of the time, because again, the running back just cannot block this left side of the, the blitz, he's going to just run right around him and get a quick sack. See what I mean? So... That's what makes this blitz so frustrating is even if you try to max protect it because the running back is just so stupid this year against contains, it doesn't really matter. Yes, you could pick up the right side of the blitz with max protect, but then whatever side of the field the running back is on, he's just going to have the contain run right around him. So this is a really, really, really difficult blitz to block. And again, if you use the proper abilities and know how to use her from it, you'll take this defense to the whole next level. Under pressure to me is very, very, very much necessary. Because you will have guys that will just, you know, try to throw at the last second and run around like crazy and throw. But if your guys have under pressure on, you're going to force some inaccurate throws. And that can definitely lead to picks or even just turnovers on down. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Until next time, I'm out of here.